This is the all new Spectre Mini, which realistically looks kind of familiar. It looks like a certain drone from 2020 that came out that was 250 grams and realistically has the same specs inside and out. The only thing absent from this drone that you may be expecting is a certain logo from a certain company. So the question to really ask is, is this drone worth it? And is this drone worth it specifically in the context of a potential Chinese drone ban? Now I think on the surface, everyone's gonna go, this drone looks very familiar. It is in fact, realistically a DJI Mini 2. It has the same specs, recording features, etc. And so why don't we talk about that a little bit more and do a deep dive into just how similar it is. So this is the Spectre RC with the Spectre software installed on it, which looks kind of familiar. So now when we take out the DJI RC N1, which is the controller that actually came with my Mavic 3, you can compare them. And the first thing that you'll notice right away is that there's missing a DJI logo on here, obviously. And then we take a deep look at that, and that is actually embossed in the plastic. So it's not just some like easily painted on there thing. It is like embedded and embossed and carved into the plastic, or at least on that mold. So definitely very likely not something that's super easily removed. However, when it comes to the Spectre, it is truly flawless. There's not some like questionable mark or anything. I mean, it truly is a flawless, nothing is there. Also, it's interesting that it's not rebranded with like Spectre, but nothing is there, which is interesting, which makes me wonder if it feel like DJI is making some kind of generic version of their drones. But like truly looking at this, this is not some like, I wanna say novel, wild concept looks identical. I think the, like it truly is very similar in that regard. The only difference that I did notice though was in the DJI RC N1, the fans slash heat sink back here, it looks like the lines are it's carved vertically. Whereas if you look at it on the Spectre, the Spectre looks like it's kind of got this weird cubed pattern. So that's cubed and that's vertical. So it does look kind of weird but other than that, it is, I mean, truly identical on the surface. So I also went through and opened up the app. So this is the Spectre Mini app. And so we can go through and do a camera view and we can just take a look. I also happen to have the same app, but it looks like you have everything the same. You have the app version 8.0. You have all of this set up, all of that. And then I also can go to the Spectre profile and see my profile and have the same settings. I can even go to more and see the flight records. So keep in mind, this is the DJI Fly app. And notice it is the really the same version. I actually can upload it and update it, but I haven't. And if you notice, it all looks pretty much the same. So it still has the same copyright version versus the DJI, which has the same copyright version there. So it is pretty similar least on the surface. However, let's take a deep look at this Spectre Mini. Now, I'd like to start by taking a point of taking this apart real quick, or at least getting this set up. And the first thing I want you to notice is this labeling on the side, this ultralight 249 grams, identical to DJI. However, other than that, the labeling is pretty much non-existent. Camera assembly looks the same on the top. We can actually open up the battery, look on the back here, and see what it says there. So Spectre Mini, and we can see that's exactly what we expect it to do. And also we can take out this battery, and this battery also has the same branding on it as well. At least similar stuff to what we saw at the Spectre Air, which is the much smaller drone. And of course, then inside, we can take a minor look inside looks kind of as expected. And you have that same camera assembly as you had on the Mini. And that's really the only labeling on there that's actually like embedded. Now the DJI logo specifically on the other Mini drones is on the back right here. And as you can tell, there's nothing really there. Logo that would be here is missing and it is flawlessly removed. So it's probably been removed in the molds. Doesn't even like really stick out at all. Uh, let's just give it a shot, give it a test, see what it looks like. Flies just like a mini. Let's just fly it around a little bit. Honestly, I'm not 
I want to say I'm underwhelmed, but it's exactly what you should expect. I mean, the flight characteristics are really good. I mean, it stays in place really well. Doesn't have any tracking, I would assume, in here, right? Nope, no tracking. So I think I'm going to go get the uh, Potenzic Atom real quick, and we're going to try that and just showcase the tracking on that, because that's a little bit better. And here we are with the Potenzic Atom, which has that tracking option. So again, we'll give that a shot, see how that works. So I mean, that's what you're competing with today. But I really do think it's gonna be difficult for them to compete, especially when it comes to this. Through $260 for this level of quality. So I think the pictures that come out of this actually looks really good. I want to say they're slightly better than the Potenzic Atom, where the Potenzic Atom had a weird issue where there was some noise slash blurriness on the edges. I think that's not as present here. I think it's barely, barely noticeable on the edges. But I think the pictures overall come out really good. They're really nice. And I think it's very similar to what I've seen on the DJI Mini 2 when I've gotten to test other people's. So I honestly think it's not bad in that regard. And it's probably slightly better again than the Potenzic. When it comes to the video and flying this, I think the video also looks really good. I'm not used to so much of like the 24 slash 30 FPS video, but I do think that that video also looks good, especially in some of the lower light situations that I've been able to test it as well. Low light, especially with the smaller sensor size, of course, is going to have that issue with some noise as well as some blurriness. But I think overall it does a really good job when it changes from bright settings to dark settings. And it does a good job recognizing that as well. So now that we know just how similar this drone really is, let's also talk about the competition. Since DJI originally released this drone in 2020, the DJI Mini 2, this is the Spectre Mini now, but realistically this is a four-year-old drone now, since they've released that, there's been a lot more competition in this space. Specifically, Zero Zero Robotics came out with their hover drone that's a lot more of a hands-free drone. Potenzic came out with its Atom and Atom SE drones, and you can actually pick up the Atom with three batteries, which has the same three-axis gimbal and recording features currently on eBay used for like $260. Currently, I actually don't know the price of this drone, which kind of raises some questions, right? Because DJI originally sold this drone for $500, which to think about that realistically is like saying that now the competition has brought that cost down to about $250. You can get them used for $260, I believe, with three batteries. Now that whole kit again would have been like $500 in 2020. So to ask the question of really, is this competitive, really depends on the price. Especially because now you can find DJI Mini 2 drones on eBay for about $250 as well. So that raises the question, honestly, if this is not priced around $300, then there really isn't much competition. Yes, DJI sells a DJI Mini 2 SE, but no one really buys that anymore. Everyone's buying the $400 Mini 3, or they're buying other drones like the Potenzic Atom which to be fair, is a really solid drone on its own. So it does raise some questions. It had this been like a Mini 4 Pro rebranded, then maybe that could have actually been a viable option. I understand they want to target something at a cheaper price tag. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense why they would choose such a cheap price tag, especially as something that's gotten super competitive in pretty much in four years. Now I would like to know though what their end game with this is. If this company, Cotigo Tex, actually continues to stay in business, then there's some real opportunity for this to improve. I think realistically it depends on how much or how involved they are in the technology. If this is just DJI rebranding stuff, then I think this isn't going to go anywhere. But there's a lot of potential to add tracking in here. That's one of the most requested features from the Mini 2. And if that magically got added in here, I would be pleasantly surprised. However, even drones like the Potenzic Atom now have op visual tracking. There's so much more competition on the market than there was four years ago when this drone originally came out. You also run into similar issues that the Spectre Air drone did as well, is that you can't really get batteries and the batteries are not compatible with DJI. So it really means that you're just stuck in an awkward situation where you have one battery, one controller, and if this crashes, you're screwed. And if you lose something, you're also screwed. So there's just a lot of questions to be had, and especially since this drone company has gotten a lot of publicity recently for how weird it is, it makes me wonder, since it hasn't gotten shut down yet, who's really involved behind the scenes. Would I recommend this drone for maybe $300 if you wanted to get something equivalent to a DJI Mini 2 that they don't sell anymore? Sure, but I just 
really struggle because the Potenzik Atom is such a great drone, especially with the visual tracking and as well as the three batteries that you can get with it realistically on sale for $300. So this is maybe $300, but there's so much competition. I really wanna know who would be willing to buy this. Like, yeah, you can't buy a Mini 2 anymore, but why would you? Especially with drones like the Mini 4 Pro having like pseudo SDK support now, and now also capable of doing autonomous missions with Waypoint Maps and software that I wrote. But I would be curious to know if there's even any SDK support for this, which would probably be one of the main reasons people would actually buy a Mini 2, because it's one of the last drones to have it. Thank you very much, very much for watching. Check out the channel for other cool tech-related reviews as well as drones, and uh, hope to see you around soon. Goodbye.